Hey soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot and in today's reading we are doing important messages from your spirit guides. Uh, to do this reading, these are the three piles for today. For pile number one, you have the green moss agate and this is what your crystal looks like. For pile number two, you have the selenite crystal. And for pile number three, you have the dalmatian jasper crystal. And this is what it looks like. So take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And this or these will probably be the piles for you here today. As I always say, trust your intuition. If it's drawing you to just one pile, then this will be your pile. If it's drawing you to more than one pile, perhaps even all of the piles, you'll be surprised to see that you have messages within these piles as well. Once you're ready, taking a close look at your piles and your crystals, and you're ready to head to your reading, please um, find your timestamps down in the description box. Click on them and I'll see you in your readings. I'm about to now begin the process of finding out which zodiac signs are going to fall in which pile. And if you're not interested in picking using your zodiac signs, please pause the video, take as much time as you need. And if you, however, love to choose with your zodiac signs, this is the section specifically for you. <laughs> so let's now shuffle the 12 zodiac signs really well and see where they're falling today and in which pile. Okay, so let's, I think we've done a good shuffle here. Let's now start picking the zodiac signs. So pile number one, you have Aquarius. Pile number two, Aries. Sorry, pile number one, Aquarius, Aries. You also have Pisces. Wait. And you have Cancer. So pile number one, is Aquarius, Aries, Pisces, and Cancer. Pile number two is Libra. Sagittarius. Gemini. And Capricorn. All right, pile number three is Scorpio, Taurus, Virgo, and of course, last but not least, Leo. So these are the zodiac signs today for each of the three piles. You can either go by sun, moon, or rising. It is totally up to you. If I were to advise you, I would always guide you to first pick using your rising because it is the sign that um, deals with your outside world. And so you'll find that it will resonate with you the most. But of course, picking with your sun is always <laughs> the natural way we feel like we want to pick our pile. So it's all up to you. You can use your sun, moon or rising. Some of you have been even picking with your north node. So really, it is completely up to you and how you like to choose your piles. Um, I use Western astrology, but I do know that a lot of people have preferences. They like to use their uh, use Vedic astrology 
that's their preferred system. Some people only use Western astrology. So it's really up to you. This is only to answer in case you want to know which intention I used um, the signs today. So this is to answer your frequently asked questions about this part. And once you're ready and you know what you're going by and you know your pals now, please head down to the description box Click on your timestamps and I'll see you in your readings. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. Your crystal is the green moss agate. And today we're taking a look at important messages from your spirit guides. To do this reading, we I really feel these two as well. So you've got three. So to do this reading, these are the Oracle decks that we will be using. And of course, your main tarot deck. Oi. So that's the second card from this deck. Let's pull out one card here. Oh, I feel this one. These are, whoa. So these are three as well. A lot of Oracle cards here. Okay, so. Let's pull out your tea leaves. There is a space here. Let me take one, two, three, four, and five. Wonderful. All right. So let's take a look at your Oracle cards first. I feel like since that's the only one that was one card, it's going to be your significator. So we have fear. All right. Are you like entering something new with the pathway here that you're little worried about not sure i think it's too early to assess let's look at your cards okay you have the air unseen potential hesitation um okay so unseen unseen potential interesting okay you have the storyteller viewpoints control Mm, we can have one of the cards here. You have snail. Okay. You have morning glory. Love that for you. Okay. And you have candle. Can we play? I think, you know, if we push these a little bit up, we can place your card right there. You have the warrior, perfectionism, burnout. Okay. And now it's time to check out your tea leaves. So you have forest, muddled, unclear thinking, tankard with celebration, fun, enjoyment, ram. A stubborn, aggressive person. Camel. Persevere and you will overcome problems. And your last tea leaf is frying pan. Trouble accusations. Very interesting, actually. I'm glad I waited. Okay. So let's pick up your tarot cards and see what tarot cards you have for today. I also feel these two. Let's see what you have. I feel like these are a lot. But we trust the process. So you have the five of swords. You have the Four of Wands, the Queen of Cups, the Page of Pentacles. Hmm. Interesting. You have the Lover's Card. The death card 
and we have three more i think no one two three and four more we'll keep them to the side i know they're out for a reason we'll find out during your reading and let's get straight into it what is your important message from your spirit guide it's interesting here because look we see we see darkness with the fear here but we also see light with the candles and the light, interestingly, causes shadow or causes us to see the shadow. That could have been uh, at least they're trying to protect us from something, this shadow. Or Okay, so let me explain to you exactly what I'm seeing here. First of all, with air... I feel like your spirit guides today in their important message to you today for one reason or the other are really focusing on passed down generational trauma or generational karma or something that's very important at the moment because with the forest here, it's causing you to not see something important in your life uh, at the moment, yeah. And specifically... It's causing a lot of stubbornness and due to the stubbornness with the camel and the page of pentacles, it's moving things very slowly for you. I'm not sure in which area, but I know it's very slow because you also have the snail here. And so the main message is this karma or this emotion, this passed down emotion, karma, trauma, whatever it is, generational, is the reason that something is going very slow in your life, whereas with the morning glory and the tank card, it is something that you can receive right away. Imagine it is something standing at your doorstep, ready for you to take, but um, the door is not allowing this thing to come in, or this energy, in that case, is not allowing this very blessing huge blessing to come in and this is why they wanted to come in and talk to you about uh, this specific emotion perhaps or energy they want you to release it so that you are able to receive that uh, uh, um, blessing so if if i were to think about it i think it has to do with fear even if you're not experiencing fear, even if you are experiencing a different emotion, like experiencing anger towards something or lack of hope towards something, I don't know what it is yet in your life. We'll probably figure out, find out together. But beneath this emotion is another emotion that's causing the, let's say, the apathy or the loss of hope or the lack of motivation to act and beneath that is something else and something else but the root cause here is fear pass down fear and despite all of that that emotion uh, sorry this blessing is not stopping you are so meant to take this blessing that although it's progressing and moving towards you it didn't stop but it's moving very, very slowly and it would be such a shame to enjoy it and celebrate it at a much later date. And you can see it here. A milestone, a huge milestone with the Four of Wands is waiting in your life. You're, but it, it, you, it's like a video game, you know how when you have to win over the monster to get to the other side? <laughs> There's something that you must overcome with the Five of Swords in order to be able to enjoy that huge milestone in your life with this big blessing. It's such a big one. It feels like a morning, that morning euphoria that we feel when we see the sun and everything is calm and nice. It's such a beautiful phase of your life. And you can see with the Queen of Cups that you receive it by some sort of emotional balance. Something has to end with the death card 
before you're able to fully immerse in the joy of the emotions that this blessing is going to give you. This is falling in an area of your life with a lover's card with something that you really love, this blessing. I see that you, the celebration here or the milestone that is waiting outside this doorstep is something that you are, that speaks to your heart. It's like if you close your eyes and you get a blessing, what it is that your heart is yearning for. It's like, oh, if I can make that business that I have in my mind successful, I think I would cry happy tears. Or, oh, if I could become that person and overcome this uh, challenge, internal challenge, I, I would absolutely have a um, tear of joy. Or if I find this person, if, or if I heal my connection with these people, or heal, heal, heal my connection with people in general, or go to that country I'm yearning for that I've been studying about all my life or something, that is where my passion is. So I, I, I could go on with examples, but it's speaking today, or your spirit guides today are talking about something that you are yearning for, that you love. And it is that one thing that you will feel like life was so good, that you're so lucky to have. Be can you believe this? It is so stubborn to reach you that with all of the things we're seeing today, it's still moving, yet slowly. It's right on your doorstep. But there is a demon here, internal demon that need to be fought, aka the shadow, so that you can finally take this out of the way and move into this great milestone of your life that you're meant to receive at this time of your life. But it's, it's not going to happen without, just like a video game, without this monster uh, being removed. And you know, sometimes in video games, they have these codes that they give to each other <laughs> and you know you can write this code and you get certain weapons that would easily kill this monster or even bypass a certain level or something it doesn't matter whether uh, it's done easily or the hard way i believe you're reading here it's telling you whether you do it the easy way or the hard way is all up to you and um, there are so many ways to do it maybe you have a magical ability that could help you overcome this. Maybe you have great intelligence. Maybe you're a psychic person. Maybe you know some um, Vedic spells that you can use to remove a bad energy maybe out of the way. Maybe you know some great types of meditations that you can do that can heal years of karma. It doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, whether you do it the easy way or the hard way, um, and hard doesn't mean like it, it's really, you, you can't do it. Maybe it's going to require some effort. It's at the door, meaning you don't have to work years and years for it. It's just something that you can focus on these days by putting so much focus into it. You really heal that shadow and your spirit guides are showing you that is not something that you can't do, but it is something that will, will require a bit of with a frying pan, a bit of dis discomfort, maybe even too much discomfort. You know, it's like you want muscles and to grow these muscles, you really have to feel the burn of your muscles as you exercise, right? As you do these lounges <laughs> and you're like, I hate my life at the moment. <laughs> you should never say that. I'm just kidding. I'm just making you laugh. But <laughs> it really hurts. And you're like, you start rethinking your, uh, why am I doing this? Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> but then uh, uh, later you're, you feel so blessed and love yourself for going through these difficulties. 
it's uh, it's uh, 20 minutes of absolute discomfort but it is the reason you feel healthier and stronger one month later when you do these same lounges you're not even thinking about it you're doing these lounges and you're already thinking about oh what do i do with my schedule today what uh, am i going to tell this person about that and just like that these sets are finished so you ha it's like your spirit guides are saying get comfortable in the discomfort and because from the outside looking out you're like oh i can't go outside doing that scary thing no way or i can't go do the do this exercise or i can't do that oh, oh that that's too hard for me and then when you find yourself it's like when you have a coach that doesn't have time it's like come on come on we don't have that you didn't start your sets come on <laughs> so it's like urging yourself into it don't think too much about it and start facing the very things that are um, uncomfortable and it starts with seeing the shadow and what stories see the storyteller before you plunge into it it start you it's about shifting the stories that you give yourself because it is these stories do you see the eyes that are giving you the wrong perspective about shifting into something and the open eyes and the closed eyes really remind me of victim mentality uh, and this is something by the way uh, that we all fall into until we go ah that's victim mentality better take myself out of it so that's why you have the light showing the shadow the story you could be telling yourself without noticing for not doing something that would easily take you out of a um, stuck situation or slow energy in your life to to something way better and so here it is about asking yourself questions like what would happen if i actually do that you get your answers straight away oh this would happen to you and this and this and this and you don't want to deal with that and what about this and take a look at these answers are they a little bit of on the side of victim mentality and you looking at this shadow assessing it now and maybe that shadow was trying to protect you and that's a wonderful thing but it's also costing you something much better and you are a much stronger smarter person than this shadow and that's the reality of human beings you're much more capable and so some although your shadow could have protected you and protected the past generations from something now is not the time for it and to see through that confusion is to see what it is protecting you from and daring yourself in a safe way to to say maybe i need to get myself a little bit uh, uncomfortable and the wonderful thing about the snail they produce this mucus when they go up uh, on walls that is anti-gravity they don't fall so it's saying that if you go outside of your fear your comfort zone and do the things you know you are not doing it might feel it might sting it might hurt a little bit but it will show you that you're more than capable and look at that the warrior you're a strong person and you're you'll be capable of displaying that strength and winning over these fears these fears once and for all and that's what the five of swords is about it's about either it overcoming you or you overcoming it and it i have this feeling that this generational karma or emotion that has been pa passed down from generation to generation it's just a feeling because i see it so heavy at the top and then it gets diluted a little bit and then it gets diluted a little bit maybe each generation was in your family was brilliant enough to work a little bit and so the passing down wasn't as severe there's some sort of dilution here happening from when it's really bad to um 
reducing to reducing and then i feel like at the end you have just a little bit to deal with nothing extreme something that you can actually overcome and uh, it you see it's shedding light on what stories you tell yourself when it is time to do something that's absolutely intimidating and it's writing down these challenges. I fear this will happen. I fear, I fear. And journaling about it, writing it down or thinking about it. What if I actually go through this? Uh, and so what if these things are happening? Of course, if anything dangerous to happen, uh, please talk to a professional always. But I mean, I'm talking about the things that you know you can go out and do and take the feedback because it is only through discomfort that we grow just like the example of the muscles. And please doc, talk to a professional, but you know, I'm just trying to tell you that it's really about uh, taking ourselves out of our comfort zone. And that's why you have the death card, overcoming this once and for all. And you are going to receive it. It's something that your spirit guides are showing you here that you're more than capable of doing, but you have gotta put yourself out there in whatever this is to see for yourself that you're able to do it. You gotta be a bit stubborn in, you know, saying I I'm gonna I'm gonna face this. Now is the time. I'm gonna do this, and you will find celebration and a new day, and a huge blessing, my dear pile number one is on the door. Uh, currently going slowly. But, and as we said, it's something that you absolutely love and will be reaching you once you overcome that demon, that tiny demon standing in your way. And it's in black showing the shadow that we have been discussing, shadow that's protecting you. Now you need to be the warrior of your own self. Go out there and show that shadow that we don't need you anymore. Thank you for being there and protecting me and other things, but now I'm taking over. Okay, so now we have three more, four more cards. And I, after seeing your reading, I feel like these are going to be your guidance on how to overcome this shadow and what it is that you're guided to do exactly to be a warrior, go out there, experience the discomfort a little bit, but come out as a winner. So you have the uh, 10 of wands. So look at that demon. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> so that's going to, of course, feel like the heaviest energy because you're actually facing the, the very thing that you've been afraid of. And so do note that... Um, I see a lot of things actually. So do note that it is going to be pretty heavy, but accept that before getting into it. And I'll tell you what I'm seeing in a moment. You have the three of pentacles. You have the seven of cups. Mm. Mm. Ah, and you have the nine of swords. Okay, we'll keep that one to the side for now. But let's let's take at the obvious cards though. So your guidance is really blowing my mind at this point. Getting into the battlefield with the warrior here is gonna be pretty scary. So your advice here is don't go into the battlefield as usual with your shadow carrying you, meaning your, your shadow is like, pile number one, I got this. Let me take care of it. <laughs> so this time you're the one who's saying, shadow, I'm the one who's gonna get this. And so this tells me that you want to be mindful 
because the shadow is part of your mind, right? It's the unconscious. So you, you, in order for it not to carry you, it has to be the other way around of you actually getting into the battlefield, being conscious. Um, don't, don't fall victims to the stories they tell you. Don't fall victims to the protections they want to do for you. Remember, you're in the battlefield to win this. And so it's about you being in the present moment at all times and not letting, because if you're not, it's your mind that's going to drive you or the shadow rather. So you want to be present and questioning every emotion that you get, every thought that you get, feeling in control. It's exactly the advice of fake it until you make it. Because you put yourself into a new energy which allows you to think consciously rather than being driven with that automatic machine. Because even when you're acting something, the healthy part is um, you're the one who's driving. And so even when it doesn't work perfectly or when it doesn't feel exactly like you, you have taken the driver's seat. And who drives like themselves the very first time they take over a car and start learning how they drive? So it's about this faking until making it makes you conscious of what's going on, makes you the one driving, even if it's not going to go right. You're now the one in the driver's seat and not your shadow. And by time, you're able to make conscious decisions of, oh, I should be careful to um, press on the pedal this way to do it softly. I should be careful to do this. I should be careful about doing that. And then you learn how to drive. And so it's exactly the thing of fake it until you make it, um, call it a toxic positivity in the beginning. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, but I'm trying to say it's like encourage yourself, uh, be strong. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly right. Don't take the feedback to heart because that feedback is not coming to attack you. It's coming to give you feedback on how to adjust it better the next time. Or otherwise, nobody's going to learn how to drive, right? So go through this process of being conscious, not letting go and allowing your mind to drive you and go into the cycle of being hopeless or these bad emotions that you usually get. It's being conscious, being in the present moment and... It may not feel like yourself at the beginning, but that's the process of finding your true self because you, may, you haven't done that before. And it is a process uh, to take over, not let your shadow take over. Until I understand what this Three of Pentacles is trying to say. Let's move to the obvious. You're getting really, really interesting cards. So here, the Seven of uh, Cups, I remember is talking about uh, Nigredo, if I'm not mistaken, that alchemist um, concept of the shadow and the light. Can you can you believe this? I I I think it was explained so beautifully. I would not be doing it justice if we weren't to read these couple of lines together. Uh, seven of Cups. Let me open the Seven of Cups here because I think we are all going to have our minds blown in a moment. I know it's talking about Negredo. Yeah, Negredo, blackening. Okay, so for the alchemist, the sun represents perfection of all matter on any level. There's the sun. Including the mind, spirit, and soul. Right. Negredo, blackening, is the first stage of development. Think of it as allowing your ego to melt into darkness. It's really interesting. This black sun is the consuming force that dissolves all of the habits and beliefs that prevent you from growing into a healthy spiritual being. Isn't that crazy what we were talking about? <laughs> Young considered the negredo the process of indi individuation. Mm. Oh, exactly. The process of individuation. Becoming your new you, your real, true, authentic individual self. Okay, we see the seven of cups appear. It indicates that we have reached a fork in the road and have to decide what path to go. In alchemy, seven is a significant number. There are seven metals, seven healthy bodies, and seven organs of the body. 
And here in the seven of cups, we see seven choices. We have reached a point where we have to decide what path to take. And this can bring us to a time of crisis. It's these dark nights of the soul that give us the ability to choose and move forward. And that's exactly what I see here. It is a time where you're now being asked by your spirit guides to face these fears and to make choices, which is the lover's card. It's a card of choice to make conscious choices of building new habits, of releasing um, patterns of thoughts, old patterns of thoughts by questioning them, by getting into your power uh, and building new habits with yourself, how you behave, how you think, what energy you exude and what different choices are you going to make? Uh, because it is through that that you find your true self that will give you that very wish that you have always wanted. It's a wish that you're yearning for with the lover's card. So um, looking at the seven of cups in conjunction to the lovers, both have an element of making new choices in your life. And these new choices are about... Um, facing the discomfort. I find it really interesting that you got the specific nine of swords because as you can see, it's very clear. Uh, it's talking about Jonah and uh, the whale engulfing Jonah. As the whale engulfed Jonah, it, it really reminds me of that shadow period where we lose hope. We are sitting in an uncomfortable position, lifeless position that is about to engulf us and digest us really when there's a beautiful life out there full of endless freedom, full of so much to enjoy. I mean, imagine creatures coming from other planets and watching our planet. I'm sure they have beautiful planets and everything, but just to, to take you into what I'm trying to say, looking at our planet and going, wow, what a beautiful planet. I would love to experience this planet. And it's like you have a beautiful world on the outside where you can do endless joyful things but you're letting into that engulfment and that shadow. Yes, is it trying to protect you? Yes, it is. But it's along with protecting you, it's engulfing your whole life. It's that parent who loves that, their children so much and wants them to be okay to the extent where they're not letting them out to play with their friends because something may happen to them. And so they're stuck at home all their lives. They're not giving them any of the food that they like. They're not researching healthy options. They're not doing anything because they're so worried about their health. And they're not allowing them to do this or do that because there's, they're not allowing them to find their passions because they're afraid they'll fail at life. And it, along with all of these protections, maybe they'll be able to say, oh, my children, they don't consume these things. My children eat healthy. My children do this. My children never experience these things. And while this is true, their children are dead on, on the inside. They haven't built their characters. They haven't experienced life. And so maybe your shadow has done you a great service at some point. Maybe it even helped you heal so many things that you needed to heal during that period of tranquility. But now your spirit guides are like, no, it's your time to get out there and do that project that you love or meet these people that you love or be that person that you want to be. And to do all of these things, you have to fake some things about yourself until you, so that you're conscious of acting in a different way than you usually do because your shadow is not you either. And uh, until you take the reins and become slowly who you're meant to be. It's like when someone's teaching you a skill, you become for a little while there, them until you master these skills and become yourself. Like an art teacher who's teaching you how to hold your pen properly, how to draw certain things, and you learn from them and you do all these things that they love. But once you master how to do clean lines, how to feel confident, with how you're drawing, with your lines and understand shading, yada, yada, yada. You're like, but I like to draw a leaf like that. But even though my teacher really doesn't like this type of art, I like this type of art. Let me now start exploring with my new skills how to do that art. 
And after a while, when you do your art and find yourself, your teacher may not necessarily prefer that art, but they can go, whoa, actually, this is beautiful. And you find yourself through that process. And so your reading here is really showing your spirit guides are showing you, yes, it is okay to fake it a little bit because you are the one in control. It doesn't mean that it's you. Forget about being you for the moment because in that journey, you're engulfing that shadow first, which is the most important, so that you have the control to be yourself. And that's what I'm seeing here. I'm still thinking about that Three of Pentacles. I mean, it did come out here. Three of Pentacles is collaboration. <gasps> oh, I feel like your spirit guides are saying, you're not going to go through this process on your own. They will remember these codes that we were talking about in a level when someone just gives you a code and you beat that monster easily. This is collaboration with your spirit guides. Your spirit guides are saying, you're not going to go through this tough process on your own. We're here raining. Uh, what is it? What did I say? Raining down on you codes <laughs> that will help you overcome this very easily. We'll give you an idea, channeled idea. We'll show you a sign. Well, you'll do a tarot reading for yourself or maybe watch a tarot reading that will help you. You, you will get a dream or you will get cleansing of energy around you. You will get so many things that e maybe even I as a tarot reader will not be able to pick up. It's another realm after all. And you will be assisted with so much magic, so much... Um, call, let's just call them cheat codes for now. <laughs> that will help you overcome this in the easiest way, this negredo of engulfing that shadow, that fear, so that you can rise like the sun, all powerful, uh, my dear pile number one. And that's why you have the morning glory, you rising up as your healthy, authentic self, receiving that very same thing that you've always been dreaming of. And my dear pile number one, this is exactly what I see as your message from your spirit guides. I truly hope you've enjoyed this reading. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. It does help out the channel immensely. Subscribe so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I do post readings nearly every single day. And it would be lovely to have you as part of this beautiful community. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. My heart is with you. I wish you the best of luck. I know you got this pile number one. I know, I can see it here, that you're going to go through this. You're going to eliminate something so big in your life. It's going to be in the past with the old generations, and you're going to be receiving something that is truly, authentically yours, because you, your true authentic self, is getting it for yourself at the moment. All the best of luck, my dear pal number one, sending you so much love, <laughs> encouragement, and so much belief in you, because I see it in your cards, and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Your crystal is the beautiful selenite. And today we're taking a look. Ah, something moved. We're taking a look at your message, an important message from your spirit guides. Okay, so to do this reading, these are the oracle decks that we will be using one, two, and three, four, wow, for your reading today. Okay, let's now pick up a card from this deck. All right, three, what? Okay, we'll just have to trust the process. All right, so I do see a beautiful card sticking out here, so let's take that. And I do see two purple cards. So let's take these. Whoa. Are you even going to have space for tarot cards today? I trust the process. Okay. I'll just take out this uh, purple card. It is popping out. And love tea leaves. <laughs> it's always so nice to have tea leaves. But yeah, a lot of cards. Let's just trust the process. And one tarot card came out. Okay, so what is your significator? Let's take this one. So you have the walker, the, the unknown, 
a journey. All right. Let's keep it right there. You have pig. Mm -hmm. You have passion. Ooh, loving your cards, pile number two. Really, I am. You have energy. Wow. I love the energy of this pile. Okay, let's see what's up. You have the alchemist, balance, invention, destruction. Okay, I was going to take this one, so I'm just going to take it. You have the um, judgment card with the apocalypse. Something major is going on in this pile for sure. I think your spirit guides are talking about some humongous energy <laughs> that is appearing in your life that you're really going to indulge into. But I always like to wait, not um, analyze until we see all the cards. So you have uh, the waker, awareness, reflection. What is that? Such a cool pile. <laughs> okay. Even apocalypse gives me this idea that something is going to erupt and it's showing you something huge in your life. Big energy here. You have cat. Owl. Mm -hmm. Okay, where do we put this one? I think you would see it if I put it here. You have tincture. And let's take a look at your tea leaves. So what is that? Love. Okay. We have October. Wow, what are the odds? All right, it is a timeless reading, but if you're watching this now, something is happening for you this month. That's why it's an important message from your spirit guides now for you to receive now. You have bell announcement. Yes. <laughs> Not unsuccessful plans. You have the month of January. Okay, we have three more. You have hills, obstacles to overcome. Shield, you need to defend yourself. And you have archway, new opportunities, possibilities, and paths opening up. Lovely. Okay, so now let's pick up your tarot cards. Whoa. I will put into consideration that the shield was attacked, right? So there is powerful energy and I'm starting to understand what your reading is trying to say here. Okay. Perhaps you've picked it up as well. Right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa, whoa, a lot of tarot cards and no space. Again, trusting the process. Okay. <clears throat> uh, looks like, you know, with all of the cards coming up, either oracle tea leaves or tarot cards, I feel like your spirit guides are first and foremost letting you know there's so many events that are about to happen and erupt in your life. So <laughs> be ready. Uh, a lot of it is great news. Some of it could be a bit challenging, but overall, it's going to be an amazing ride. So major things are about to happen. And you know, I'm not surprised because on the 14th of October, there's a solar eclipse dealing with endings and beginnings. And you're really uh, into that energy specifically. You see the sun rising here. Oh, talk about solar eclipse. There is a lot of things. And I feel like Overall, 
there um, these changes in your energies are gonna make you feel indulged in everything that you love and uh, yeah everything that you love you're just gonna be immersed in so many things that you love most of the energies coming in you're going to love some are gonna be a, more challenging than others for sure we'll talk about that in a second but overall it is a great period for you okay and and, and i'm not mis i'm not surprised that some things that you may not like because here you have solve et coagula which uh, in alchemy or it's a latin sentence used in alchemy meaning that things have to dissolve in order to be recreated so let's see what this is all about so cool <laughs> Right, six of wands right off the bat with the champion. Of course, you have the ten of wands with the burdened one. Exactly, and that's exactly what I'm seeing, right? And with the waker, yes. You have the uh, king of pentacles with archangel of mysteries. You have the Six of Swords. Well, you know what? We can push these up a bit. Hmm. All right. You have the Six of Swords. You have the Hierophant. Hmm. You have the Defector, the Eight of Cups. If I put it here, would you see it? To a great extent, I think you would. So you have the Ace of Swords, and it did come in reverse. I'm not, uh, I don't read reversals, but to me, it feels like something may start off in a way that you may initially feel like you dislike. Uh, also, the swords uh, reversed is maybe a sacrifice. Maybe you have to do some sort of sacrifice before it begins. Okay. The Ace of Swords. You have the um, Queen of Swords. Wow. Okay. The Shining Gale. Oh, no. The queens are the shields. My apologies. This is the knight of swords. And you have the king of cups. How many do we have left? Two. Let's keep it to the side. We can keep it here. And then we'll take a look at it later. Boy. <laughs> Where do we begin with this reading? So red pill, blue pill, there is definitely a choice or some decision that you're going to be taking soon with an, an coming with an announcement this month. So this month, there is a huge announcement happening for you. This is going to be an announcement of great news, but you will also recognize along with this great news something that is i i want to say a bit complicated or something that's not absolutely right about it and you can see with the owl here there's a price tag that's coming with this great announcement and so as you can see here this great announcement is making you feel like a winner with the six of wands but also there is an aspect that is very heavy within this great announcement or with this great news coming up for you that you will feel is going to be rather heavy uh, to hold. And this is why the Ace of Swords first, first came out in reverse, meaning a new beginning that is beautiful, clear with like clear communication, but a part of it requires a certain sacrifice from your side. You can see here with the red pill and the blue pill, you are going to have to make a very wise, solid decision. 
Now, <clears throat> this hardship, oh, uh, hardship is such a strong word for something like that. This challenge is the right word. This challenge is not something that you're not going to be able to overcome. You have the tincture here, meaning that you are going to be able to heal the situation. In fact, I see something really interesting with the knot here and the cat. So it will require a bit of effort from your side. Like initially you will think that, oh, that was easy. I think I was able to fix this. I'm really smart. And poof, remember when the shield got hit to the side, when the cards fell, your initial defense line or boundary or whatever it is, is going to be uh, hit. But you've got the cat and the cat chose nine lives, meaning that although this may not be energy that is easy to initially deal with, but it's definitely nothing that's going to take the joy from you, A, eh? we'll talk about that, and it's nothing that could affect you to that extent. Nine lives means maybe you're going to feel the hit, feel a little bit disappointed, but you're going to get up and you are going to continue to work on this naughty situation until you find the new possibilities and path and get out of it. And it seems to me like by January, if you're watching this now, if you're not watching this now, then in three months, the situation, the tough part about the situation that you may not initially like is going to be resolved by January, where you finally feel like you're able to protect yourself very well, overcome these challenges, and finally walk out to the other side while winning uh, the great news that is coming with this announcement. And you have with the alchemist here, you can see something magical happening with the news. You see a feather here. You also see a feather here. Um, it's not a feather, but it looks like one. Representing a message coming to you that you will love. But it is a message that you have to work with. A part of it you will have to dissolve and rebuild in order for you to um, see the light and experience it in the way that you want to experience. Now, let's talk about this news first before we continue here, because this news, which is the biggest part of your reading here, is going to be so exciting for you. And I'll tell you a great analogy that just hit my mind. So I've been dragging on and on about this challenge and really not giving the right reading its true essence. And in your reading, this is going to be news that will melt your heart. You're going to be so excited. It's you walking in a totally new experience. Yeah, experiencing something for the first time. There's passion, there's love, and what you're there's real indulgence <laughs> in this great news. You're revived, there's energy, such powerful energy that you're going to be experiencing. So what is an example of something so good, but that comes with a price tag and one that you will have to work on um, in order to remove? And, and what is the ratio of this challenge versus the blessing that you're getting? It's exactly like being given a great position uh, at work, your dream job, or for some of you, a, a great love. I'll give you the two examples. And this way you'll totally understand the ratio that I'm talking about. So let's say you got this great position with a great office, with a great view, and you get to travel all over the world. You've got a salary package like a dream. <laughs> and along with that package, everything comes for free. I mean, you, you take your children to the nicest schools for without having to pay for it. You've got the best insurance. You everything is paid for, uh, and um, uh, everything about your life, the benefits that come with this job, are 
out of this world, the, the amount of power that you have. And by power, I don't mean bossing other people around. I mean by power, like the um, things that you, the tools that are given to you so that you are able to achieve the goals and the visions that you have for this company or organization is amazing. And let's say everything is just out of this world good. But then you have... Uh, uh, one of your employees or an assistant, for example, who doesn't like you, likes the old manager better, you're new, and does his or her job, but or their job, but really, while maybe doing it in a little bit of an attitude or in a little bit of an annoying way. Nothing that crosses the line, but it's annoying. For example, now, the thing with the, with the assistant here is that you will be working together most of the time, uh, you know, agreeing on schedules, agreeing on the communication she has to do, agreeing on all the other things that you won't be able to do by yourself because it takes your, from your time. And so my point is, there is an issue here, a communication issue. It's, uh, yes, not that core of the work, but it is somehow also at the core of your work. So that's what I'm talking about ratio here. It's not such a big deal. Like you're not going to go, that's it. I'm not taking all of these benefits because I don't like uh, this specific employee or assistant, right? <laughs> that's not going to happen. And what I'm seeing here is that you will be using different strategies to better your communication with this person. Uh, uh, to an extent where it's going to heal and at the end turn into something really wonderful but it by by three months so your first line of defense of the first ideas that you get and apply with this person it's not gonna work uh, obviously they don't have the right energy for you to deal with them but as you go through this You'll untie one knot after the other. They'll watch you be very skillful at your work and how you're able to solve many things that they thought were impossible before. So they gain trust and honor you or, or respect you and respect your skills. They see, they start seeing that you are very lenient when it comes to things that are not really that important to work, but very strict when it comes to the, the work being done on time. And, and they watch all these different things about you and you, they sh see that you are not backing down either. You've got nine lives. And so as you adjust this communication and this dynamic within the next three months, even that problem that little thing that was make really annoying you or making you feel bad because it is at the core of your work, your work experience, even that's going to be resolved um, by three months. So that's what I mean ratio to blessing. It's a huge blessing, but it will be coming at some sort of price tag that you will have to deal with. Uh, I got worried because something was going to fall here but it didn't. And that's the thing. That's exactly it. I think that was a message for you. You might be sh shocked in the beginning, feeling like, oh my God, that's going to be horrible, but it's not going to be, it's not going to turn out to be a, a, a big deal at all. Uh, B, you're going to be able to solve it bit by bit, where by January, really, it's going to be, it's going to come together. And you're going to feel like finally, this whole opportunity is opening up its doors in the best way possible, in the way you wanted to experience it fully by that time uh, in January. Now, out of all of that, I see the most important message that your spirit guides want to give you today is really centered right here in your reading with the Hierophant. And, you know, the Hierophant's job or the priest in the Hierophant's job is to pass down their wisdom to the adepts, right? So to prepare them for um, for their roles. So your spirit guides are telling you, don't take this as a negative thing. Don't feel bad about it. But realize that this is teaching you something significant in this within this blessing. Imagine having an amazing blessing where something can go wrong. 
versus you getting an amazing blessing and getting the wand to overcome any difficulties that comes within this blessing. And it's kind of like giving you that wand that will help you deal with anything else that would come later on. So it's more of a challenge that is preparing you, not to make you feel like, oh, you don't deserve to get the full package of happiness or that uh, it's, why can't you just get it the easy way? Actually, this is the easy way. What I'm seeing here is that it's somehow with the Mercury teaching you some sort of communication form. And I see with your spirit guides letting you know with the last judgment that it might feel like an apocalypse or something difficult, uh, this challenge a little bit, but it's going to be the last challenge that you're going to endure within a situation like that. Not because other things aren't going to happen later on, but because you will know how to slowly communicate and deal with it like a piece of cake when any other challenges come. So that's why it's a little bit heavy in the beginning, but I do see your spirit guides with the eight of cups telling you to release your emotions of uh, difficulty and rather deal with it little by little. Because this way you're not only going to be proud of yourself and experience uh, this blessing in its fullest form once you know how to deal with it, but the most important thing is you're going to learn how to handle anything moving forward. It's like every single time you look back and someone tells you, oh, how, do you, how did you learn? With, how did you deal with this challenge or this difficulty? You're going to be the one who always says, I was lucky because I, I've learned from the very beginning what these challenges are all about. And I've put systems, I've put strategies, and I've learned how to communicate and handle them very well. Now, when things like these happen, I have the experience, the absolute experience and the set up system to just make it work very well. And I, I was lucky it didn't come later. I was lucky it came right off the bat so that I am able to adjust it to the way that suits me. And that's why you're going to be so lucky with the situation. It might look like a challenge, but it's going to manifest into one of your biggest benefits. And yeah, one of your biggest benefits actually within this situation. Because I just channeled something when I looked at this card. It's like everyone that gets that type of blessing has to deal with that price tag. So you are going to be one of the lucky ones who gets this blessing without having to take it with a price tag. But that comes with a price tag, funny enough, for you. And that is having to deal with this situation from the very beginning, learning from it and uh, knowing with the Knight of Swords how to quickly and swiftly deal with it later very easily. Also, uh, with the King of Cups, you finally get the whole thing. Meaning, you get to, as you abandon the red pill, I forgot to tell you about this part, as you abandon, sorry, the blue pill, which is, you know, just letting, you know, not dealing with the situation, deciding that you you can just put it to the side, deal with it later, or the red pill of saying, right, this is not good and I have to find a system or a solution to fix it. So choosing, that's why there's a great choice to be made at the beginning and choosing to deal with it rather than ignore it will result in you walking away from this difficulty and you get two things. You get to enjoy the benefit that comes from not having to deal with a price tag like that, that usually comes with a huge blessing, but also you get to enjoy it and immerse into the enjoyment of it fully with the King of Cups. It's, it's, it, this is going to be a huge thing in your life. Like, um, this is a new chapter of your life, this great blessing coming up. There's no question about that. And even when you're going through these challenges, you're going to feel so passionate about it. You're going to feel so happy and you're going to, immerse nevertheless in it, but maybe not fully. 
until you're able to shield yourself and protect yourself from the challenges that come with it. Very interesting story, my dear pal number two. And the thing I love about your reading is that it's not a process that you have to dissolve and resolve and, you know, in years to come. The wonderful thing about your reading is that you got two timings, one of the news coming now and the other letting you know that you'll finally be able to deal with the whole situation by January. Okay, so you got two more cards. Let's see what they are. I don't know if it's guidance or if it's more information or what it is, but let's find out together. I feel like we're meant to see these two cards after we've seen the whole situation because only then we'll be able to fully grasp what they want to tell you through these two cards. So you have the Mason with the Three of Pentacles. And, oh, the Vagabond with the Five of uh, Pentacles. You won't believe me when I saw the Three of Pentacles. It instantly reminded me of the Five of Pentacles from this deck. And it's crazy. <laughs> That's exactly what we got here. And it is true that this is, these two appeared in the right time, actually. So first things first, the three of pentacles shows that you're not going to be alone in dealing with this difficult situation, that your spirit guides, three of pentacles, they will be working with you to help you manage this and get out of it safely. You won't find yourself staying alone just like this person who's feeling hopeless in the Five of Pentacles at any time. This is a strong message finally ending your reading with your spirit guides letting you know with everything that's happening. This is meant to be a great miracle and a great blessing for you. And do know within the little challenge within it, you even that, you will never be left alone, not even for a second and I do know that there is the um, the Latin phrase ex nihilo nihil fit I, it, it, I remember it it meaning from the Greek philosophy nothing comes from nothing it's from the Greek philosophy meaning nothing comes from nothing which really means that in my opinion from your reading you must do something in order for something to change. It's the biggest message you have because you have here also the Latin phrase solve et coagula. Something has to dissolve before it's able to be rebuilt. So your reading here is clear. I think your spirit guides are talking about you really getting deep into the situation, understanding what's the source of it. Um, it's kind of like getting your hands dirty, trying to fix it uh, and making it adjust to the way that you like it. And do know as this happens, you're not going to be left alone, not even a second, because here, even in the five of pentacles with a lack, like you really want something in this situation that's not happening yet, you do see the uh, Abraham stone, maybe I should take it a bit closer. You do see the Abraham stone, which is a stone of healing, a stone of fortunes. You can really see the idea that uh, communicate with Mercury, with your spirit guides. They will be there making this journey easy for you, very easy for you. You do have to put in a little bit of work, but it, it's not like um, you're going to be assisted in a way that you won't uh, imagine. You know how sometimes you've got this, like when you were a student, you had to finish like this huge paper in a couple of hours and you're like, oh my God, how did I put myself in this situation? <laughs> how am I going to be able to do all of that? And you really focus and you are lucky to find some uh, really great references and you're like, whoa, this is going to make a great point in what I'm writing. You find great sources, you find great ideas on how to put it together and it's just working out so nicely. 
uh, and you, you're building cases, you found something brilliant that looks like you've worked weeks to find, yada, 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 and the paper is brilliant, right in the nick of time, you finish it, you print it, or you send it to your professor's email, and your professor is like, great job with that paper. You get an A when it's supposed to be something that you've maybe had to work on for weeks. You were lucky to get it done in a couple of hours. So I'm seeing the idea that, yes, you're going to be the one doing this work, but you're going to be so assisted and it's going to be, you're going to be so lucky with the things that you find, the ideas that you get, the, how the energy just changes and you're able to form it in the way that you like, where something brilliant is going to happen and it's going to be solved easily, dissolved and recreated so easily that uh, although it looked hard from the outside, you're really going to be wondering inside, whoa, that was pretty okay. That worked out fine. <laughs> easily, actually. So this is why you're getting these two cards in the end. Remember, your spirit guides are there. They're going to make it easy for you, but you have to get your hands dirty and just try to make it work. And it is going to work. Put your heart in it and it's just going to work. And my dear pile number two, this is exactly what I see in your reading. It certainly was a very interesting one. I wish you the best of luck with that message coming in with your whole life changing. <laughs> May you always be blessed. You're going to be on a journey that you will love, a bright journey that you will love. This was your reading and if you've enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. It does help out the channel tremendously. Subscribe so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I do post readings nearly every single day and it would be lovely to have you as part of this beautiful community. Thank you so much for tuning in. All the best of luck. Sending you so much love <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye! Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. Your crystal is the Dalmatian Jasper. And today we're taking a look at an important message from your spirit guides. I feel these three slid out. So let's take them. Okay. And we'll be taking a card or we'll see how much. Yeah. One card from this deck. And finally, of course, let's take out some of your tea leaves. So... You've got one, two, and three. I also see a split here with two. All right. I, I also feel this one as well. Right. So let's see what you've got. Oh, look at that. There's a timing card. Let's pick it up. Let's see what this is all about. Let, um, I think we can take this one as your significator. Interesting. You've got the gambler. So we have loss and risks. Very cool. Okay. Um, you have... Ah, cat. That did pop up in pile number two. You have the painter, productivity and creation. Beautiful painting. <laughs> you can see some flowers here. All right. Oh no, we also have one of one more of these cards. How about we place it actually up there? So we have space. You have the walker, the unknown. A journey that also popped up in pile number two that was their significator in that case i re i highly recommend pile number two if you were drawn to it okay let's check out what this month card is february okay you also have balance mm-hmm That's interesting. You have, whoa, crown, honor, and respect will come to you. Beautiful. That's a great thing here. You have bouquet, 
compliments from an admirer such beautiful cards <laughs> you have feather someone who is undependable and insincere let's keep it there this way you can see your cards okay you have chair filled someone new is entering your life you have broken bridge unsuccessful outcome to a problem you know how i saw this in my mind uh, unsuccessful outcome to a problem it's like a problem was coming in to create an issue but it was unsuccessful and couldn't create it that's instantly what hit my mind with this card and you have target a goal oriented person pretty beautiful pretty positive and beautiful cards overall let's now oh, let's now whoa 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 <laughs> your cards are popping let's check out your tarot cards whoa whoa it's like uh, they're really ready to come out okay right so let's see what you got you have the five of cups mm -hmm. the full card mm. that's why i have the gambler you also have the eight of cups Mm -hmm. You have the star card. You have the chariot. The strength card. The tower card. Mm. It's a very interesting tower card. I love this tower card. You have the Three of Wands. The Two of Wands. And we've got one more card. Let's keep it right there. Ah, so you've got the Eight of Pentacles. And that's an interesting Eight of Pentacles as well. Okay. So, it, it, it looks like... You are definitely embarking on a new journey for sure because you do see Alice rabbit jumping into the rabbit hole. And I see that this experience is some sort of a risky experience. At least that's how you're perceiving it. But you're quite excited about it. And sneak peek into your future with the cat. It does look like you're going to survive this. Uh, the difficulties maybe that are going to come with this situation or the difficulties that you're perceiving or expecting with this situation, you're going to definitely survive it. A cat has nine lives and it truly shows that um, nothing will be able to like uh, stand in your way. With the target, you're going to reach your goal with that risk and uh, with the chair filled, you're going to fulfill whatever it was that you wanted with that risk that you're taking. I think we need more light. There we go. And I think this came as part of your reading where the light started to darken and we had to turn on the light so that you can see better. Because it looks like you're gonna at some point feel like your world is uh, unbearable at the moment where you're really tired of what's going on in your life. And you see here, Alice, pulling the tablecloth, dropping everything and walking away with the Eight of Cups. It really shows me with this Tower card, this is your gamble. This is you being fed up and going, that is it. That's enough. Pulling yourself out of a certain situation, walking away and taking a new risk. There's no question that you're going to be taking a risk, a gamble with 
in an area that's important in your life because you're absolutely fed up. And there's no question that it's going to be a journey because we have a journey, the unknown. Yeah, it's very clear that you're going on a new journey. It's one with the star card moving towards the light. It's one towards something you're actually hoping for. It's like you're pulling the tablecloth, you're walking away because something in your heart wants to experience things differently. And so you are moving towards that hope and towards this type of life, ideal life that you want. And are you going to fulfill that dream? Yes, you are going to fulfill this dream. In fact, the things that are going on in your life at the moment are not going to be successful in overcoming you or winning over you. You are going to be the one to overcome these challenges uh, in your life. With the cat here, nothing can take you away at this point from what you're hoping to achieve or what you're hoping to do. So three of wands, two of wands, and your spirit guides are letting you in on the fact that in a very short period of time, your mind's going to start wandering off, thinking, what if I actually start living the life that I want? What if I can achieve that life in a smart way where I can have the things that I want, but it not being that risky on me? What if I can achieve this journey or this dream that I want? So you're what ifing here. And in a short period of time, you see the rabbit and Alice looking at the watch as the rabbit always does. <laughs> I'm late. <laughs> so I think it gives me a, an intuitive sense that you'll be making a quick, swift move, move here where you're going to feel like... Uh, I think it's time for me to leave this situation and move towards what I want. That's definitely happening here. And I feel like with the strength card, you're going to feel powerful enough to do it. The deer shows delicacy. So maybe you still don't have an idea how to do that. There's an element of the full card with the deer. It's like you're still optimistic about it you're very optimistic about about it but you don't know how you're gonna go through it yet you don't have a lot of information but you're feeling very strong you feel like whatever comes my way i'll be able to do it the the thing about the fool since we're seeing the deer is that when a fool there's an element to the fool when they put themselves out into new situations that they don't know maybe they don't know much about it but they have the skills and the tools to be able to figure it out. Just like Alice, just like, let's say, you know how to swim, but you're taking this long, deep dive for the first time from up uh, um, a hill into a lake or something. And you're like, oh, that's risky. But you are, uh, you're not someone who doesn't know how to swim. You are equipped with your skills. You know how to swim. You know that you'll be able to figure it out. Yes, it's a risk, but uh, you're going there with skill. And that's what I'm seeing here with the strength card uh, in conjunction to what I felt was kind of giving me the full. And oh, look at that. The full is right on top of the <laughs> strength card and I'm sensing the full. Right. So yeah, that's what I'm feeling here. You're embarking on a new gamble, but you got this kind of energy for sure. And I think your spirit guides are also here. This is the reading about their message. They're telling you, you got this. You're going to get this idea very soon. And uh, you're going to make quick, quick moves you weren't expecting to make. But you got this. Now, in the beginning, it's going to take some training on how to make that idea work. Your spirit guides are telling you, don't be discouraged because you do see here with the chariot, Alice is trying to play a game of uh, croquet and the animals aren't cooperating. <laughs> Maybe we weren't supposed to play with these animals in the first place like that. So I think your guides 
here are saying that in the beginning of this journey, you're using new tools. I mean, think about this pen. How is this white king supposed to write with this really large pen up on the floor? It needs requires mastery. It requires mastery and skill. And so you do see here uh, with the eight of pentacles, you'll get used to these new tools that you're using and you'll be able to master and do great designs or master and do great things with the tools that you have. These tools may not be the best tools that you'll be using in the beginning, but it's a new journey that you're learning. Uh, and no, I don't know what it is, this journey, but there's this, did you, did you notice? We've been talking about skills and tools. <laughs> so even here, the brush is a tool. You'll be learning in this new journey how to use the tools available to you, what tools to ditch, what tools to improve, what tools are going to be there that you have to get used to and learn to master. So don't be discouraged. Some things you'll realize, maybe I'm just using the wrong tools here. I shouldn't be using this for that. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. And you'll be able to win at that game. Do know that this new experience is going to require you to learn a lot of balance. And here we get the idea with the yin and the yang. With the nail, screwing the yin and the yang together, nailing them in together. Nail, by the way, reminds me that you're going to nail this. So, And it's all over your reading, of course. And it's not the problem that's going to be taking over you. It's you rather going to be taking over this challenge, mastering it and doing it and painting or doing something lovely out of it. So yeah, the cat shows again over and over that this is not going to overcome you. You are going to overcome this situation. You're getting into a new challenge and it's not going to win over you. It's not like, oh, this was naive. Not at all. It is a new challenge. You're aware that you're getting into a new environment, maybe new country or maybe new job or love, love or whatever it is. Uh, and you're jumping into it, falling into it. But you got the tools. And you'll realize how to use these different tools to your advantage and do note here something very important. Back to the balance. Your important message from your spirit guides as you're going through this new journey is to understand that life is yin and yang. There, um, life is masculine energy, feminine energy. Life is, there is the good, there is the bad. There is the blessings, there are the challenges. And the success in your new journey here, that's going to be so exciting, by the way, so exciting, it's what you're wishing and hoping for, <laughs> requires that type of understanding because the crown is on the crown chakra, right? You, there is invitation to understand something deep. And in order to succeed in this journey, which you're meant to succeed in, you want to not harbor in the good and push out the bad. The success will comes in combining these two energies together. You know, it's not like saying, uh, it's not about the win, the good winning over the bad or the female winning over the male or the male winning over the female or this team winning over this team or that team winning over that team. It is about merging and becoming whole, uniting the two together. And so in your experience, it's about accepting the challenges, for example, if it's challenges, accepting the challenges as well as the blessings that are coming with it and uniting them, making it part of your experience because only when you merge these two together will you get the advantages from each and learning from each. So 
your biggest and most important message is nailing these two together. Harboring. Don't say, oh no, I don't want this and I want that. Uh, it's about learning to take these energies in. They're not meant to compete. They're meant to merge peacefully together. So let's give an example to what I'm seeing here. Sometimes you learn the very best skills, very best life lessons from the very experiences or people you absolutely disliked. So if you have a, keep an open mind in your experience, for example, um, having to deal with specific people that you rather not deal with, you don't like these type of people, having an open mind, not to like them, you don't have to like them, but like there's always something to learn from them. So by keeping an open mind and accepting that each type of energy gives you something, but also challenges you with something, both sides, you'll be able to be careful on how to deal with these two energies, but at the same time, take the blessings from each one. And that's the yin and the yang. You've got the white dot in the black, part of the yin and you've got the black dot in the white part of the yang. So it's certainly what is going to make you survive because that's the cat here that's in green. So having that balance and open mind to go, okay, I'm, uh, I should not say never, I should not hate that much and take the best out of everything and be careful from everything, even the good, that's where um, I'm going to be absolutely successful, standing strong on my own two feet, dealing with the situation. I see that your spirit guides are telling you, although this is going to be an, a, a great journey, uh, with the painter here that it says productivity creation, there is a lot of work ahead to create what you have in mind here. So at the very beginning, there is a lot of work here for you. But at the same time, this work is going to be very fulfilling. You're going to love what you're doing here. Absolutely. So it's not like a lot of work ahead that you're going to hate. It's going to have its challenges where you're going to learn so many things and how to deal with the tools that are not necessarily exactly right for you. Maybe the people that you don't necessarily like or something but you love, you, you love every bit about it, at least the creation or the productivity part of it. But there is a lot of work to be done up ahead. Not one that you're going to hate, but it is effort nonetheless. And I see with the winds of February that there's preparation, like Feather shows me that there is news. There is some, some form of communication bouquet also, so both are showing me someone is offering you something uh, and very valuable with the crown. And I think you're the only one being offered that because there's only one king, right? Or one queen. So you're being offered something only one or very few people get to have. This is like a very one once in a lifetime opportunity or... Um, something the very few people are lucky to be offered, something that is far out of reach for most people, in fact. It's only something that people can try to reach and mostly are disappointed with the Five of Cups. And because they don't get that, sometimes most people have to settle and love what they have. But you're one of the lucky ones where you won't be going through that process. You're really here going to be offered something. It is pretty risky. And you're going to like, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going to actually take this amazing offer. Who, who's lucky to have an opportunity like that? Nobody. And um, if you have family or friends telling you, wow, that is a, a great, but did you think about that? But what if this happens to you? But that's not safe. But what if, what will you, maybe I think, although it might be too good to be true, maybe you should just do what you do. It's much safer. 
I mean, I can see why you're mesmerized by this, but it really might not be a good idea. And remember, your, your guides are telling you this is something that is out of reach for everyone. The fact that you're getting respect in such an honorable way, this opportunity, don't buy into the ideas of disappointment and settling. Reach out and get it. Uh, my dear pile number two. So there's communication going on there, perhaps these days or something, or in the coming period of your life. And it's going to launch with the blowing of the wind. It's going to launch by February for you, where this journey in actuality starts happening in the month of February. And so until then, there's a lot of preparation, but this preparation is full of excitement. Your heart is fulfilled and you're loving every part of it. And maybe you have people telling you, like I said, be careful, this and that. And you're like, no, uh, I'm going after this. And the tower shows that you're going to be leaving so much behind to be able to do this. You're like, I'm imagining you. I'm just trying to imagine. I could be wrong. It, it's going to depend on in which area it falls in your life. But uh, like I can imagine you leaving your home, like uh, to talking to your landlord, paying what you need to pay and leaving. I can imagine you leaving your work. I can imagine you saying maybe the last goodbyes to your family and friends. I can imagine you um, maybe preparing your traveling papers. Uh, contacting uh, places or making phone calls with people or things that you haven't done before. I, I see you preparing, preparing, preparing for something here. And I see your heart filled. I see your heart excited. And I see you enjoying it far um, well off before it actually begins. So from these days or something up until February, you're actually immersed in this. And then by February, it actually begins. The game begins. And when the game begins, my dear pile number three, like your spirit guides have shown you here, do know that there is a lot of preparation. There's a lot of things that you're going to be learning. And there's a lot of wisdom in accepting the challenges that are going to come with the blessings. And it, you're going to nail it by accepting these two energies and not running away from one uh, energy and fully immersing yourself into the other without learning at least about the risks that come with it. And as time goes by, do you see, you, you can kind of have the feeling that whenever the brush goes over one of these white spots, it starts painting. Oops, sorry. There we go. In these white areas, you kind of feel like when the brush strikes or paints over it, you're going to see the rest of the picture as you can see it in the parts that have been colored. Meaning, because this is a new experience to you, things will start being clear to you. The whole picture will come together. You will understand everything about the situation, how to deal with it, and what are the good, what are the bad, and how to deal with each of these as you go through this experience. It's not something that can be told to you. It's something that you must experience with your own hands to understand and grasp. Until then, the crown here talks about your mindset. Make sure that your mindset is mostly focused on experiencing the good part of it um, because it will give you clarity, peace of mind. It will give you this type of enjoyment you need to deal with the yang. So, or the yang to deal with the yin. And so, and so I'm seeing here, despite the challenges, immerse yourself in this beautiful experience. Enjoy it, love it. Um, feel gratitude towards it. Remind yourself constantly of the amazing things about it which you will be doing, like I mentioned, far before it even begins. <laughs> and so it is that beautiful energy that will give you the good mindset to have the strength to go through these challenges calmly and tranquilly and not with a lot of stress and fear. 
Uh, and so to function from that place is definitely much more empowering at any point than it is from a place of fear and anger or frustration. And you can see your cards showing you. Your mind is going to help you reach your target in the way you want. Your mind about accepting both energies is what's going to give you that uh, nothing can overcome you uh, energy in your life or situation. You're going to be put in a position where nothing, nothing beats you. To you, it's something you're learning from calmly, adjusting and accepting the wins, accepting also the losses, learning from them and improving them in order to, in the future, get everything that you want. And more is what I heard in my mind as well. I also feel with the cards that your spirit guides will be talking to you in so many ways. They're, they're going to be in touch with you, either through tarot readings, and I'm not surprised you got this. It is a tarot reading after all. It means you're someone who uh, does your own tarot readings or you watch tarot readings or maybe you get private readings. In all cases, I'm just giving examples. Your spirit guides are really telling you they're going to be speaking to you through numbers, uh, signs, synchronicities. They'll be there spiritually. They'll know how to contact you. They'll know how to give you the message. You might have someone passing by saying something which will catch your attention and you're like, what? What, what, what is that thing uh, that this person said? And then you have someone say, oh, that's a department here that we have in our uh, company. You don't know about it. No. And they start telling you about all of the advantages in this department. And you're like, whoa, next time something happens, you're like, but there is this that you tell your manager, but don't we have a department that deals with this? Why are we doing it on our own? And then your manager says, wow, very good point. Brilliant, actually. Uh, please contact them right away. Let them know. And you, you'll you find that, uh, for example, in this, in this specific example, I mean, your manager finding you being proactive. And, and through it all, the message here is that your guides will be showing you the way. They'll know. It's their job. <laughs> They'll know how to pass on the message, show you the way, either through tarot, through numbers, through synchronicities, through signs that you see, they'll be able to deliver the message to you. You finding synchronistic things at the same time, you hearing about something in the right time, they'll know how to reach you and how to show you. And you seem to me also someone who's very, very connected. I mean, the crown reminds me of the crown chakra, also the communication with spirit guides. You must be connected. <laughs> you must be someone who's so ad good at picking up signs and synchronicities and understanding messages and a highly intuitive person is what I'm trying to say with a with a very active crown chakra and it seems like you were able to connect you and your guides and there they you've you you've been able to connect each other you know they're there you've seen their signs and you've got healthy beautiful communication going on so and 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 if there is energy flowing between the two of you, you and them, I mean, and they'll, they're saying they're, they'll be by your side. Uh, don't miss out on this opportunity. Don't listen to anyone. Follow your own intuition, your, how you feel about it, because when it comes, it's going to make you very happy. Don't listen to any ideas. Oh, this is uh, out of this world. Good. Why should you trust it? Maybe you have to be careful. Uh, this... Are you going to do this? This is crazy. Maybe you'll have people who are jealous trying to discourage you from taking it. Don't listen to anything. Reach for the stars. It is yours, my dear pile number three. It truly is. And it's like your spirit guides are handing you the tools to help you reach for the stars and take something that you're meant to take, that it's yours. And as you are taking that, this it will be your key in lear learning these new tools and learning to handle the whole situation. And my dear pile number three, this was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. So cool. I can't um, begin to imagine what this must be like for you. 
and look out for some commu beautiful communication, mind you, with the feather and the bouquet and the crown. This is like beautiful, honoring, respectful communication. And look, compliments from an admirer. Although it's an energy that is hard to reach, you've got someone or an organization or something reaching out to you, admiring you. So it's going to come in the best way possible. Look out for it. Listen only to your intuition and to your mind, of course, and keep an open mind to accept both, study both energies, uh, read more about what you're being handled, handed, and uh, think well about it, and just with the fool, just throw yourself into the rabbit hole. <laughs> it's a beautiful world down there. And my dear pile number three, this was your reading. I truly hope you've enjoyed it. I personally have enjoyed your reading tremendously. I wanted to tell you guys, once this happens, if you want if, and if you can share, I would love to hear more about it and see how this magic applies in your life. <laughs> I would love to know. I get so invested in your reading, guys. It would be so nice to hear about it. So, my dear pal number three, if you've enjoyed your reading, please give me a thumbs up. It does help out the channel tremendously. Subscribe so that you never miss a reading that I upload. I do post readings nearly every single day, sending my utmost love to you. <laughs> May you love this experience and have a lovely time as you learn to navigate through it. This was your reading. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.